I'm sure there's a player who's injured of one of those teams who would be a well deserving of the opportunity and probably sound a little more excited than Tony Ray manages to. Or one of the players from the first game could commentate on the second game. Yeah. You know, there's, you know, there are ways around it. And we could have, you know, built up the personalities a bit more. Um, and I, I do think some of the, I, I, I think the idea of putting them at these venues so that they'd be double headers all the time was probably to make the logistics around it a bit easier in the COVID environment and, and that sort of thing. So okay there, but then probably it removes some of the incentive and ability for clubs like Castleford, Leeds and Wigan who've, cons- well, not Leeds actually because Leeds are based at Wheatwood for their women's games, aren't they? But yeah, to stream these games themselves because Wigan have consistently shown their women's, especially home games on their um, Wigan TV platform and Castleford have consistently shown them on either YouTube or Facebook and Leeds have regularly shown them on Facebook too so yeah I do think it's a missed opportunity especially for the clubs that have done it so well so far Um, so it is a bit disappointing and I really think they do need to think about the coverage it's great though great great that the BBC did some pieces of a preview and did a piece on the website over the weekend Um, Sky Sports did a preview and are showing highlights, but I think they might only... I, I don't know. You'll have watched the highlights, guys, whilst we've been recording this. But when I read what was on the highlights, it looked like it would just be the Wigan-Warrington game, which then disappointed me because I thought we might get to see, you know, Kelsey Gentle scoring a hat-trick or um, Sophie Robinson coming back from injury and, and, and scoring a try or Saints going or over Car- a point Car- a minute. Carrie scoring a hat-trick, yeah you know so so much things to see from the top sides um and we might only get to see one of them which is the one we already got to watch uh the full game of so yeah i think there's a bit of an own goal on the on the coverage but at the same time there's also really good it's really good that there's been so much put into the personalities i mean people go on any website any rugby league website in the last week you'll have seen interviews with people and it was it wasn't just the same people it wasn't jody cunningham and danica prim all over the place they're great and they definitely were seen and heard but you know you had more from from courtney hill who's who i think is brilliant we had uh kelsey gentles was on one of them rachel thompson did an interview uh, on the club's own websites. They had different players as well coming coming out and, and having chats. Uh, I saw something with Michelle Davies. I saw something did a with... series. Yeah. Yeah. Forty Twenty TV did a series of interviews, all with players who, I think, in most cases, it was the first or second interview of theirs I'd seen. So that was quite interesting and quite enlightening in, in and of itself. Yeah, and there was also um, Amy Hardcastle was on the. Radio Yorkshire uh, and the stuff. local new local news as well. Yeah. So so you know that's all really positive but it'd be great to see a bit more of the games as well. So let's hope the RFL figure out a way. Um let's talk about the games though and we'll start with the game that we all saw. We got a fan view on this one. Um it was Wigan 52 Warrington 8. Tim, what did the fan view say? Yep, it was from our friend David Dr. Hideous who said, as this was played in a fenced off section of a local public park, it probably had the biggest crowd of any match so far this year. Some good rugby from Wigan who were fleet of foot with good, accurate passing. Warrington need to work on the basics, especially tackling, but there is a decent team in them hidden underneath the missed tackles. Warrington's Georgia Sutherland stood out for me even more than player of the week, Georgia Wilson. Yeah, Georgia Wilson scored um, five tries. Uh, she, she she does this she does this thing when she scores. I've noticed this a few times where she scores the ball behind her. She sort of lets her legs go out in front of her, and then she puts the ball down behind her. It's a it's a very weird technique. I was going to say it's very it 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 esque It's it's it just doesn't look very comfortable. <laughs> no, I, but oh. I. I I, re- I remember the very first game that Georgia Wilson played in Wigan's very first game um, in back in 2018, and she didn't really 
know about playing the ball and to go from that <laughs> to being you know an England international very talented player who scores for fun um it is is something to commend her for um I thought Becky Greenfield was brilliant at, at jumping into dummy half um from the fullback position quite regularly making really easy easy quick meters uh, whenever she did uh, whenever she did that I thought Thompson and Burrows were good in the half for Wigan but really the the part of the side that was outstanding for Wigan and was a total cut class above Warrington's even though Georgia Sutherland who David mentioned played in the back row for the Wolves um, the Warriors back row of Vanessa Temple Paige Costello and, and Vicky Molyneux was outstanding uh, outstanding in this game and they yeah, were the line, the line that they called out on, on the on the bit of the commentary that I saw of uh, Molyneux running that she ran to set up was it Rachel Thompson she set up where she just did this beautiful fading line that that just created acres of space. No, she set, I think she set up the try for Temple, the other back rower, and one of the other back rowers. Um, but yeah, you're right. She ran some great lines. They, they all three did, uh, and and all three looked like really fit basically and a lot more of a professional kind of cut to them um and you know there's competition for those places isn't there because saints have got some really classy back rowers as well uh classy and feisty back rowers at saint ellen's um and and then the charlotte boo can play back row is playing in australia so there's unfortunately she's broken a broken a arm I think it is. So she's going to be out for quite a while. And I think the signs are she may not be able to come back for the World Cup anyway because of her, the deal she's on in Australia would mean she wouldn't be able to leave the country. Right. Crazy. It's yeah. Weird. It's uh, with the immigra- her immigration status would mean that if she left, she basically would, that would be the end of her visa. Well, it's not like we don't have good cover in those in, that, in those positions anyway. Well, she's been playing. She's been playing um, in the forwards, interestingly, and she's been um, That's playing. That's I mean, yeah. The, in, well, she's been playing in the front row. Oh. So she's, yeah, she's been, and she was. I think she came off the bench in the first game, uh, and then, but she started one or two games at, at prop. So yeah, she's moved. I mean, she has now played pretty much every position on a pitch. Surely, you you you'd think she was a maybe not she, hook, hooker, possibly not. Yeah. Right. Let's let's do the other. Uh, so Wigan, well deserved winners. Surprised me how good Wigan were because they were better than they were back when we saw them in 2019. I would say this this Wigan side, Warrington, not not as good as I was hoping for from them, but they were missing. Um, Michelle Davies, their captain, who has won a grand final with Wigan, and obviously Roxy Mira Masilla's left, hasn't she? She's she's gone back to New Zealand, so she was a key player for them in their championship winning season. Um, Castleford forty, Featherston six. There was a, a hat trick for Kelsey Gentles in this one. Um, probably the the standout for Cass. Um, Bradford nil, Saint Helens six. There was three, three. Hat-trick. Sorry, St. Helens 6, did you say? Sorry. I think you missed an 80 there. 86, St. Helens 86. Um, I was too excited to tell you about the three different hat-trick scorers for uh, for Saints. Uh, Carrie Roberts, fake, uh, sorry, not fake Cunningham, Jodie Cunningham and um, Amy Hardcastle on her debut for, for Saints um, all scored hat-tricks. So the centres were doing the damage there in that game. There was also a couple of tries for Bush, a couple of tries for Rudge, um, you know, and Chantel Crow got a try as well. I mean, Crow and Rudge are probably the first choice for England in the in the second row, aren't they? But there's so many options. Yeah, there. and and you've got, I mean, just in the Saints team, you've got Vicky Whitfield as well, who's back from injury, so she's another one that's going to be pushing for that that place. I Actually, think this it looks is... like Crow played in the front row, uh, which I think she's got the size and the aggression for. So uh... and, and interestingly, yeah, because um, Jody Cumming was playing at least forward as well. Because that's yeah, that's the question of where she fits in in terms of the the England side. So I think I think for this... England you'd want to play in in six, but for Saints you can play her in the pack. 
against this sort of level of opposition. Yeah, I think I think this is my my question with is particularly looking at Saints is where I think it's the most skewed, but I think it, it applies across the league. Is the way it's developed that the distribution of talent is so uneven? Does that lead to real up and down, and that meaning that actually in terms of preparation for the World Cup, the girls aren't going to get the right level of games and intensity. Uh- I think in a sustained level that it's going to cause too many problems. I think that's why the way they've structured the season is actually pretty good because you're going to get Cass, Saints and Leeds playing each other regularly in the latter stage of the tournament, aren't you? Which is what you need to be seeing, um, really. And we're going to, I'd say, undoubtedly now going to be the fourth team in that top four that are going to play their round, their two-headed round robin sort of things to get to their final um so we haven't talked about the Leeds results 68 points to 16 winners over over york they were um courtney winfield hill grabbed two tries and um a new name on me a doa equiwu uh, grabbed a double as well um as well as elfrain and um several other people got one try in that game for <laughs> for Leeds. Uh, two, two tries for Henry of the York City Knights as well. So, um, so you know, a name from the one of the losing sides we can mention. <laughs> but the, the big four with the big four wins. Yeah. Right. Into let's, the, let's into the championship. The championship. Yeah. Uh, it finished to lose 24 London nil. So nobody saw that result coming. No one predicted that. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, given London's form, they've, I mean, they've, they've almost got off like that. I hope they get a decent punishment for for this because they've been idiots. And if if they were concerned about player welfare, they should have said that. But they were just concerned about being twats. Yeah, and I wonder how much it will hurt them that they won't get this game counted towards their total of games. For the, they're not going. I mean, they're, they're, it's yeah, not going to be a factor, is it? They're not going up anyway, are they? They're no. not going to be in contention, so I don't, I don't think it's going to be a problem for them. Nope. Uh, Batley forty-eight, Oldham ten. Witness fourteen, Dewsbury twenty-two. We had a fan view on this one. Yeah, Pop the Viking said, absolutely fucking awful. Poor completion rate, poor defence, and lacking in defence. I'm getting the message that Witness's defence wasn't very good. <laughs> It finished Bradford 27. No, we've Halif- missed, you've missed no, two. We've missed, missed two. <laughs> yeah. We finished Bradford 27, Halifax 26. That one was one way then the other. I thought Halifax had run away with it, then I thought Bradford had run away with it, and then I thought Halifax had won it, but Bradford in the end won. It also finished Swinton 6, Feverston 36. Yep, Whitehaven 29, Newcastle 20. We got a fan view on this one. Yep, Dr. Hideous said nine tries, all but three coming from errors. In the first 12 minutes, where both teams were completing sets, they both struggled to carry the ball beyond their 30. But then the fumble fingers came out. Haven's last try scored by Wormsley. But most of the work done by Mossop was just magic. Far too many errors from Newcastle. Haven's biggest error was the smear of brown. <laughs> Across the chest doesn't work on a blue background. I believe it's technically chocolate. <laughs> and then one last result, bit of a surprise one. This one, York fourteen, Sheffield twenty. So well done to the Eagles, and that means in the standings, it's Toulouse, Sheffield, Featherstone, and Dewsbury, all two from two, um, two favourites and two surprises in that group. Halifax, Batley, Whitehaven, Alderman, and Bradford are all off the mark with one win from two. Newcastle and Widnes both have a point from their draw match in round one. York, Swinton, and Travelshire, London are all yet to get off the mark. There we go. In the NRL round six, it finished the Broncos twelve. The Panthers 20. Alan Walker said, handshakes all round for the Panthers. Great response to the killjoys who don't like young Turks having a laugh. They rip after the world's best seven ice the game. He got a two point or two and made it look easy. Cleary and Luai look like they've played together since they were kids. They have. The youngest team have the <laughs> highest team purity rating. They could be doing this for a decade. 
I don't want to know how you work out a team purity rating. Uh, it finished the Knights 26, it's not Sharks 22. 